Mara's liturgy. <laughs> Remember how it used to be? The kings were our dear fathers under whose care we lived in peace, and their deeds were glorified by official poets. Piously, the simple-minded breadwinners passed on the lesson to their children. The kings were our dear fathers under whose care we lived. children repeated the lesson. Suffer! Suffer as he suffered on the cross, for it is the will of God. And anyone believes what they hear over and over again. And so the poor, instead of bread, may do with a picture of the bleeding scourged and nailed up Christ, and pray to that image of their helplessness. And the priest said, raise your hands to heaven, bend your knees, bear your suffering without complaint. Pray for those who torture you. For prayer and blessing are the only ladders which you can climb to paradise. And so they chained down the poor in their ignorance, so that they couldn't stand up and fight their bosses, who ruled in the name of the lie of divine right. <laughs> to the church since our emperor is surrounded by high-ranking clergy and since it's been proved over and over again that the poor need the spiritual comfort of the priests. So there's no question of anyone being oppressed. Quite on the contrary, everything's done to relieve suffering with uh, clothing collections, uh, medical aid and uh, soup kitchens. And in this very clinic, we're dependent on the goodwill not only of the temporal government but even more on the goodness and understanding of the church and particularly of our friend, Monsieur L'Abbé. Hmm? <laughs> if our performance causes aggravation, we hope you'll swallow down your indignation. And please remember that we show only those things that happened long ago. Remember, things were very different then. Of course, today, we're all God-fearing men. Pray! Pray! Oh, pray to him! Satan, who art in hell, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in hell. Give us our good deeds and deliver us from holiness. Lead us, lead us into temptation over and over. Amen. Foreseen by our playwright, who managed to compose these extra lines in case the need arose. Please understand. This man was once the very well thought of abbot of a monastery. It should remind us all that, as they say, God moves like man in a mysterious way. Before deciding what is right and what is wrong, 
first we must find out what we are. I do not know myself. No sooner have I discovered something than I begin to doubt it and have to destroy it again. What we do is but a shadow of what we want to do. And the only truths we can point to are the ever-changing truths of our own experience. I don't know if I'm hangman or victim, for I imagine the most horrible tortures. And as I describe them, I suffer them myself. There's nothing I could not do. And everything fills me with horror. And I see that other people, too, turn themselves into strangers and are capable of unpredictable acts. A little time ago, I saw my tailor, a gentle, cultured man who liked to talk philosophy. I saw him, foam at the mouth and screaming with rage, attack a man from Switzerland, a large man, heavily armed and destroy him utterly. And then I saw him tear open the breast of the defeated man, take out the still beating heart and swallow it. Mad animal. Man's a mad animal. I'm a thousand years old, and in my time I've helped commit a million murders. The earth is spread. The earth is spread thick with squashed human guts. We few survivors. We few survivors walk over a quaking bog of corpses, always under our feet, every step we take. Rotted bones, ashes, matted hair under our feet, broken teeth, skulls split open. A mad animal. I'm a mad animal. <laughs> Questions don't help. Chains don't help. I escape through all the walls, through all the slime and the splintered bones. You'll see it all one day. I'm not through yet. I have plans. We invented... We invented the revolution. But we didn't know how to run it. Look. Everyone wants to keep something from the past. A souvenir of the old regime. So this man decides to keep a painting. This man keeps his mistress. This man keeps his horse. This man keeps his garden. That man keeps his farmlands, that man keeps his house in the country, that man keeps his factories, that man couldn't bear to part with his shipyards, that man keeps his army, and that one keeps his king. And so we sit here and write into the Declaration of the Rights of Man the sanctity of private property. And now we see where that leads. Every man is equally free to fight. Fraternally and with equal arms, of course. Every man his own millionaire. Man against man. Group against group. In happy mutual robbery. 